Hello and welcome to an episode of Advanced GIS. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at GIS workflows and how to use Python programming and model builder to create reproducible workflows in ArcGIS Pro. And now we can define our process. So the first process here was called fill. So we can come over here and just simply copy that and come in here and paste. Notice that it tabs in. Python is left indent specific, which means you really need to get rid of any weird indents. Napa fill, we don't have to define where it's located because we've defined the environment. So Napa fill is simply Napa fill. For whatever reason, fill overwrites Napa fill. So there's no reason for this to be defined twice. So I'll just replace it there. So there's fill is Napa fill. Napa fill equals arcpy.sa fill and the input surface raster was input DEM raster layer, which I have changed the name for the purposes of this demo. I can indent to make it a little bit easier to see. And do we want to save? Arguably, we don't need to save. I just want to create a Napa fill. Okay, what we can do is actually run this tool. And if we take a look at Napa Fill, there it is. Awesome. Next step in the process is flow direction. I'm going to copy. Actually, I should copy with the comment and paste. Now, you can actually highlight all the text that's indented, and holding the shift key and hitting the tab key once will back up the indentation, or you go in and delete them all. Again, I don't need to define the path anymore because we sent it as a, an environment. I don't need to redefine this twice, so I'm going to overwrite it there and delete this first instance. So there's my flow direction. ArcPy flow direction. We have the input surface raster as Napa fill, which we've created. It exists. It exists only in memory. We haven't saved it to our file geodatabase, but we don't need to. Output drop raster we've defined here as empty. Uh, so you could always just save yourself a little bit of typing and replace this with the open and close quotes and get rid of that. So now we are sending it our input surface. We're calling it normal, no output, flow directions D8. And do we want to save it? Let's not save it right now. Let's just see how it works. So we run the cell. We see that the output comes up. Add a new code cell and Napa FDR. And we see our flow direction. Very cool. The next process is the XY table to point. So we come down here and we copy and we paste. And then it indents, we unindent. And here, our outlet geo, the output location, I don't need to give it the path, just the name. XY table to point, the input table is input outlet coordinate table, out feature is outlet geo, X field is lawn, Y field is lat, Z field is empty, coordinate system, is this really long string of text here, and then we'll end there. All right, input outlet coordinates table. I have actually changed the name, so I want to make sure that it's my input outlet table. Copy the variable name, come down here, and paste the variable name. 
So this coordinate system is WGS1984. So how do we actually just get a spatial reference? Now it says we can do arc pi spatial reference and just give it a name. So let's see if that will actually work. So up here, I'm going to add another code block. I'm gonna call it my in CRS for my input CRS. And this is arcpy dot. It's good to just copy so we don't copy it wrong. Copy, paste. And this isn't Hawaii Alberts, but it's WGS84. And let's see if it works. Doesn't like it. WGS84 doesn't like it. WGS1984, there we go. GCS WGS1984, 4326 is the well-known ID. That's the one I want. That's my NCRS. So I'm gonna go ahead and define the G. CS 1984 for our point location. Run that. And then it says the coordinate system is this really long definition, or it's my NCRS. Okay. <clears throat> so this is going to read my table and it's going to create an output feature layer. So I'm going to run this. And notice that it does have an output, which is interesting. And what happens if we look at Outlet Geo is just a string. So we can't actually visualize it, which is a bit of a downer, but no worries. Let's move on to the next process. So projecting it. Let's copy this and paste. So that's indented, that's indented. This is very long very hard to see. So outlet NAD, we don't have to define the path anymore. We can just call it outlet NAD. ArcPy management projects. The first is the input. Then it's the out data set, And then it's the out coordinate system. And then the transformed method, the input coordinate system, the preserve shape, max deviation, vertical, all right, the input coordinate system, again, is going to be our in CRS, so much easier to read. The output coordinate system, we have changed the name, or rather I changed the name. So I'm gonna come up here to where we defined the output coordinate system. Copy that, come down here and paste. Now the transformation method arguably would, should also be a parameter um, because how do we know what the output coordinate system is and what the input coordinate system is? We're doing a little bit of guessing here. Could be a little bit dangerous if we allow any kind of inputs or outputs, um, because this is specifically the 1984 WGS to NAD 1927. All right, so probably should make a note here that says, this may need updated, depending on input. Now let's go ahead and run this tool. 
and we see that it succeeded. Perfect. New code cell. Now we can run the flow accumulation. Again, the indentation we want to get rid of. The FAC, I'm just going to give that a name here. Remember, I don't need it to be double defined, so I'm going to put it there. So there's my flow accumulation. The output comes from this function that takes an input flow raster, flow direction raster. No raster weights. It's going to be a floating point type using the D8 method. Do I want to save? I don't need to save. And we'll run this tool. And we can take a look at Napa FAC. And while we aren't playing around with the symbology here, we do see that lightning bolt shape, which is classic to the flow accumulation raster data set. Next on the list is the snap pour point. We come in here and we paste. Snap pour point, we can just define it thusly. Don't need to double define, delete that. The ArcPy spatial analyst snap pour takes an input, which is our outlet NAD, flow accumulation raster, the snap distance, the pore field, and do we want to save it? So snap distance, we changed the name, rather I did up here in defining parameters. It's called it snap dist. So I update the name. And then if I run the tool, Now, what would snap pour actually look like? It's a single pixel. And you, you can't even see it. So not even worth looking at. All right. Then it's a, just a matter of running the watershed tool. Yeah. Make a note that I can't even see the single pixel. Maybe it's too small. All right, the watershed, the output of our watershed is supposed to be output watershed raster. Come down here. And this takes an input flow direction an input pore point with a pore point field. And then do we want to save it? Right now I don't. I want to run it. And I want to take a look at my output watershed raster layer. All right, so we've now copied the complete process into notebooks. So I'll click Save. Now, how do we actually use this as a process in notebooks? Well, we could come up here to where we created our first defined parameters. And from this point, we could change the Napa DEM to a different layer. We could change the outlet geo to a different table. We could change the projected coordinate system if we wanted to, or rather let's go ahead and play around with the snapping distance like we did before and change it to 150. Now, once you've changed something, you can come up here to cell, and run all below. So I want to run this just to reaffirm that the 150 has been assigned and then come up here and to click run all below cells. It actually says run this cell and all cells below. 
this should reprocess everything below here. Notice how they all have little asterisks, which means that they have been queued for processing. And there we go. Each cell below gets executed in turn and we get our output. And when you're happy, you can simply uncomment the output watershed raster layer dot save. And to save watershed is to save it to your file geodatabase. And I can always rerun this. And I should see over here in catalog in my W shed, my Napa W shed layer that has been created. Also the outlet geo and outlet NAD, which we could not avoid creating because of the processing tool. So here we have a way of incorporating the geo processing tools that we used in Arc Pro or in Model Builder with the textual elements to describe the process and visual elements like images where we can put them all together in a single workflow.